God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Hi, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and this is the Heart to Heart Truth podcast. This year, I'm taking a pause for a moment. This year, I've had the wonderful opportunity to be able to bring to you many a guest. Oh, we've talked about a multitude of things from the fact that we dealt with mental health issues as well as mental health issues in the church and how we don't wanna talk about what we really need to talk about. See, I really wanna make sure that you put feet to your faith. In other words, you practically apply what it is that you know about the truth of the word of God. It's time out for playing church. It's time out for being on the outskirts, on the peripheral. We need to own our faith. We need to delve in deep and understand what it is that we believe and stand on those promises, walk out those principles, because that's what's going to get us through. I know I'm passionate about what I talk about. Why? Because in the midst of this pandemic, we have not really been connected. And it has been a sore spot for some. This is October, known as Clergy Appreciation Month, where we then acknowledge those that are taking account for our souls, Let me go ahead and put this little point right here. James chapter number three, verse one is still in the Bible. It says, desire not to be many masters for you shall have the stricter condemnation. You will be held accountable. Too many people are looking for a title and they think that they are graced or anointed or gifted to be able to do that job. But let me just say, if God didn't call you to it, please, Don't step into it. Why? Because you are accountable for each and every word that comes out of your mouth, how you treat those people. God's going to ask you, to. how did you do with those that you were then in charge of? I've taught biblical finance. I've taught many of the logical programs. I've taught ministry gifts and church government. And I am passionate about making sure that we live an abundant life. Financially, yes. Emotionally, yes. But spiritually is number one. And so I'm taking a pause for a moment to say thank you to each and every one of those that I had an opportunity to interview. Yes, they've got their own businesses. Some are coaching and I'm loving it. Some of my pastors that were on, Pastor Dwayne Massenberg and Pastor Jamal Quinn, I'm thankful for them coming on, talking about the things that do concern the church. And at this time, I want to say first and foremost, thank you for your service. I've had others that came on and talked about books that they've written. We don't write books just for our own sake or for you to just keep them on the shelf. We write books because we want to disseminate information to you so that in your knowledge, you will then be transformed. This is heart to heart truth. Can I tell you God loves you? Can I tell you he wants you to do the best that you can? The Bible tells us to do business until he returns. What business are you doing? There's a population of people that I'm also passionate about that are no longer living on purpose, if you will. They're not aligned with what God has called them to do. Some because they don't know what God has called them to do. Others because they've been hurt by other people. Let me just remind you that the Bible says that we have these treasures in earthen vessels. You are a treasure. And yes, we might be in an earth suit. We might just be mere dust. And God recognizes that we are not perfect, but we have a purpose here on this earth. And it's not just for us. It's not just to leave a legacy for our family, but it's also to impact and influence the kingdom. Let's do that. Now, I'm going to show a few clips that are going to follow of some of the highlight reels of what we have talked about. 
We talked about your health. Get healthy. If you're not healthy, you can't do what God wants you to do. We talked about the exercise, that physical body. And Aaliyah Haynes is one of my favorites that's out there. And I'll probably put her clip in as well. And she's trying to make sure that you're doing that in a healthy environment, especially in this pandemic, that you are then building your immune system as well as building your body so that you can have the stamina for the rest of your life. We talked about books and from Alicia Clemens to Sharon Cannon to so many others that write books on the theological subjects and even my friend Dwayne Massenberg uh, on the repenting. And America really does need to repent of some things, but it needs to start in your home. Those books are there. And I've got financial books that you can pick up as well. But guess what? Our, my heart and our heart, all of those that were a part of this, from midlife to stepmom strategists to all of those that have been working in the prisons, those that have your best interest at heart for your business, for your personal life, for your financial health, we want to see you prosper because God wants to see you prosper. So take a listen to the highlight reel and I'll only put a couple in, but just know that there's still more to come. I've got some others lined up for the rest of the year that you are going to absolutely love. First, I'm gonna say thank you for subscribing, liking and sharing and commenting below. Let me know if there's a particular topic that you'd like for us to cover. Yes, I can do the gamut of the theology because we wanna get you the truth. For those who are struggling with their faith, we want to struggle right along with you. And we want to be on that journey with you to discipleship. I've got a new book that's coming out, Sister to Sister. It's going through the seasons of life every single day, just so that you will have someone to come alongside. This is my passion to give you what you need. So do me a favor and let me know exactly what you would like to hear coming up and I'll make sure I get the right people at the right time to meet that need. Thanks for listening and I'll see you on the other side. Well, the biggest thing is taking the time to read because so many of us, we have so many ways that we're occupying everything else. And then when you look at the time that it would take, and I know this personally, when I miss my devotion, my day don't go right. And how important it is. I don't care if it's five minutes, 10 minutes. That's why I mentioned in the book to just having like the daily bread, the upper room or any other daily devotional piece. There's so many books out there that have day by day devotions and they're not very long. Right. How important that is just to get your day started. But I do encourage everyone to when they wake up every morning to always thank God for waking them up. And I really believe that some of the guidance in the book to just sharing about the stories will encourage them to want to read more. And to, as I tell some people, go check me out. It was my research, but you go check me out and see if I was on it or not. We sometimes wear these masks that everything is perfect. Everything in our life is wonderful. And when behind closed doors, a lot of times we're suffering silently. And so, um, there are just all these issues that we deal with and a lot of times we'll keep them to ourselves and keep them secret when in actuality if we would share with other people you can find out that there are others that are either going through something similar have gone through something similar and if we'll sometimes just open up our mouth and share you know god has put that person there to help you and assist you Secrets is kind of like that. It deals with, I'm telling you, real life struggles. So exactly. I didn't want to just sugarcoat things. I wanted to be out there in the open. And it's sometimes the hard subjects that we don't want to talk about, we don't want to deal with, or we feel ashamed or guilty about something. But God wants us to deal with all of that stuff. You, you know, in order to get rid of something, you've got to get to the root of the cause of it. And so, as we were saying, there's nothing new under, he says, there's nothing new under the sun. I know the very number of hairs on your head. I know what's in your thoughts. I know what's in your mind. I know what's in your heart. 
So let's just deal with it. And it's not always pleasant dealing with it, but at some point in time, we have to. So a lot of times we go through those sanctuary doors thinking, you know, or making it look like uh, that we have these perfect lives when in actuality, we don't. And so the characters in Secrets. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier, I started getting back into my fitness journey around October of 2019. And so up until this point, and I started with Beachbody in January of 2020. So up until this point, January 2021, I've lost around 40 pounds um, throughout this experience, uh, 27 of those being strictly with each body. And I know a lot of that throughout that time, I wasn't focusing on my diet at the beginning. And so now that I have kind of dialed that in, it has helped a lot um, in my weight loss journey. I did want to mention as well, just because we were talking about just the body image, um, there is the body positivity movement going on and, and saying that you should love your body at whatever stage it's in. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. But also, like you said, like we need to have some level of health um, and fitness in order to continue to complete the actions that we need to do here on this earth. Um, and that's not saying you have to look a certain way or be a certain size and body positivity and being healthy at the same time. Take um, a performer like Lizzo, for example. She is very much overweight, but she can outperform. She probably has better lung capacity than I do because she's singing and dancing and doing all this that and whatever on stage and going on tour doing show after show after show. And so you, there's no way for me to say that she's not healthy, she's not fit. Some people, no matter what they eat, depending, like it could be the healthiest food in the world and they still will look overweight. They'll look different than I would if I ate the same thing. And I think that there's also like something so cool about um, you can take the same workout program, same diet as someone else, and we would still all have very different bodies because not everyone is built the same. God does make us unique, doesn't he? And that's awesome. And I've been able to enjoy many of the programs as well. The size program, the dancing, you know, where it doesn't feel like it's fitness. A workout. <laughs> yeah. You know, planks, uh, you can kind of keep some of those. And some of the weightlifting, <laughs> but that's okay. There's in, in Beachbody, there's plenty of variety for everyone. And I kind of mentioned you talking to the young girls before, but this isn't limited to any specific age, is it? No, not at all. There's uh, a program for everyone, like you mentioned, variety. We have some really cool things that are happening. I think we release about four new programs every single year, so one every quarter. And so we've got things from boxing, we've got bar, yoga. We do have low impact workouts. We have workouts that you can do with your family. The age to start is 18 and up, but there are options in there that you can do with kids as well. And so there is no age limit for fitness. And so that is, a, it's a really cool thing that we offer. Well, Aaliyah, it has truly been my pleasure to interview you. I think you're absolutely beautiful, but I might be a little bit biased. <laughs> I mentioned that I was a senior pastor of two congregations. Mm -hmm. And because of all that I've been through and all that the Lord, uh, the journey the Lord took me on, I realized that there are a lot of people that go to the building that do not know God. A lot of people actually work in the building, but they still don't know God. Um, okay, you want to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> at each level, I kind of thought, it's going to be better at the next level. Mm. When I was first a deacon, I thought, okay, now, you know, th there were older deacons around me because I, I told you I was in my 20s. I said, okay, they're pretty much going to take care of things. I'm the youngster. Everything's going to be all right. Didn't work out like that. They were talking about each other every time I saw them. And being a senior pastor and seeing some of the politics, even as a senior pastor, some of the things that people are are doing and going through and how congregations disrespect the past. Now, I know there are some things that there is, it's just like everything else. There are some people who, who are in it for different reasons, but there, but the Bible says mm -hmm. that I will give you pastors. Uh, After it, my own heart. Yes, that's right. The, the Bible says that God is the one that ordains pastors. So these pastors that are doing the best they can to live the life 
and teach people about God, those pastors should be respected. And unfortunately, uh, it's sad. And so I saw a lot of that. What really led me to the book, I was pastor in my last church. Mm -hmm. And we used to have an evangelism ministry. And we went out and we would, you know, talk to people. Do you love the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Yeah. Do you, what, do you, I, I said, do you, do you know him? Not do you know about him? Right. We would pray with people on the street, all this. And then one day I ran into these two boys. Well, for the believer, well, we're not going to go there. That's not your normal. Oh, go uh, there. Go there. Okay. Wait, wait. We're going to come back to that. We'll, we'll come back to that. Or there's a lot that you're mentioning there. Um, and I'm sure you got a long list. But I think that that gives a good place for people to start saying, I do need to maybe talk with someone. And with that, though, I'm sure you give coping skills as well of, hey, why don't you try this? Here's one, two or three things that you can do, because I do like to give my my audience uh, something that they can take away and say, I need to check this. And yes, yeah. they can check whether or not they need to go see someone. And I'm going to suggest that everybody gets on um, Keisha's social media, follow her, follow what she's doing. I'll put that plug in now and make sure I put it in again at the end and make sure it's all in the show notes. But what coping mechanism or skill would you say that we need to definitely develop? So I would say um, foundationally speaking, there are three things that I have been learning more and more about that really helps our mind, which then helps our brain function properly. Number one, sleep, good sleep hygiene. You okay. see she's putting her head. Just had to do that with you. Oh, I am. Oh, I am. <laughs> um, but outside of you, good sleep hygiene is so, so, so important for our body on countless levels. A good, good nutrition. Your body needs fuel. And if you fuel it with junk, it's going to run junky. So good nutrition. And then the one that I will probably need to hang my head down for is exercise. We need to move. So when you have a good diet, when you're sleeping good, and when you increase your physical activity, you give yourself the foundational things so that you can work more effectively. And then outside of that, acknowledgement. Be aware of how you are feeling. Your feelings are your feelings and they are okay. We were created with emotions. If we did not have emotions, we would be robotic. We would be boring. Your emotions are okay. And if you do not acknowledge them, then they will do what they've been doing, controlling you. Once you acknowledge your emotions, then you can start to control and manage them more effectively. And then I would say connect to people. Isolation is the trick of the enemy. If I can get you by yourself, then I can whisper all these lies in your ears for you to believe and you won't have nobody to challenge them because while he's telling you these lies, you are reinforcing them and saying, yeah, true that. You right. Oh, I remember that. And you have nobody to say, Hey, this doesn't look right. I mean, and I should have probably said the first thing we want to do is pray. We want to seek God's word about what, who he has called us to be, because at the end of the day, even if we don't feel that, you know, uh, I learned in worshiping God that I don't worship him out of my feelings. I worship him out of what I know. And when I don't feel like it, the more I tell myself who he is, I am willing myself to feel the worship that I owe him and that he deserves. Mm -hmm. And so when the Bible says that we are to take all of our thoughts under captivity, under the obedience of Jesus Christ, that's exactly what we want to do. I mean, the Bible tells us everything that we need to do. Oftentimes we don't open it. We don't read it. We don't look to it um, because the Bible has really sound 
uh, advice and yes. suggestions on how we should do everything. You know, Philippians 4 is one of my favorite stuff when he talks about do not be anxious for anything, but in everything with supplication and prayer, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will, the peace of God which guards your heart and your mind, it will surpass all understanding. I've debauched that a little bit, but my theologian will fix that when, when he starts speaking. And then after that, he tells us to focus on these things, yes. whatever things are true, whatever things are right, whatever things are just, whatever things are of a good report and praiseworthy. Do these things as you've seen me, Paul do, and the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind that is your soul the bible he, he i mean after that what you gotta do you know uh capture your thoughts yes reframe them yes. and then continue to tell yourself who god calls you to be you're fearfully and wonderfully made you are the head and you are not the tail that you are the clay and you're being molded in the potter's hand you know that's the part that people don't like oh i'm i'm a christian i'm a believer and everything's supposed to be great no clay being molded in the potter's hand mean that he's gonna have to yeah that's that, that interpretation <laughs> that we have to work out with yes. fear and trembling right <laughs> right and so right. I would say that those um, obviously and then talking seeking professional help is always something that I'm passionate about but that just those three basic things and then being aware of your emotions and really practicing gratitude in all things give thanks gratitude surely does cultivate joy yeah. I mean in everything, give thanks. When you're upset, give thanks. When you're depressed, give thanks. When your world seems to be crushing down on you, give thanks. When you're joyful, give thanks. When you're, when you're happy, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. Why? Gratitude does not invalidate or minimize how you are currently feeling. It just gives you an opportunity to see that there's more to the story. Oh, that's excellent. So anybody who is local, and I don't think they have to even be local sometimes, if mm -hmm. you are partnering with them that, you know, Pastor Jamal is saying, hey, I am opening up the opportunity to be able mm -hmm. to partner with you so that we can bring God's word into yes. this earth and like, you know, cancel right. some right. of this cancel culture stuff that's going oh, on these oh, days, yeah, let's cancel sure. it out for Christ, okay? And make sure we put Christ culture on the, <laughs> on the board because there's so much. We're supposed to be the hands and feet of Christ. We're mm -hmm. supposed to be the ecclesia, the called out ones, not just in those four walls. And I really think that in, in during COVID time period, we had to get outside of those four walls. We could sure. not just stay in the sanctuary, yeah. Yeah. but he was mm -hmm. calling us to be, out there amongst the people and doing mm -hmm. things and people are watching us. I mean, there mm -hmm. was a saying, and I don't know if it was Churchill, it was somebody else way back when said, you know, all the time you're supposed to preach Christ. That's right. If necessary, use words. Mm -hmm. oh, so wow. our example <laughs> is what we are showing and we For should sure. show it by partnering one with the other on the same mm -hmm. page with the same mm -hmm. ideas, why reinvent the wheel? I mean, right. you know, right. my engineering mind comes like, what's yeah. the root cause of the problem? But why yeah. reinvent the wheel? If there's a system that is working, jump on board. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. So you're yeah. looking for those, I mean, and it's not limited from what you're saying, if they're doing food pantries, if they're doing evangelism, any mm -hmm. of those type of things, even in broadcasting, right. Or mm -hmm. possibly even in coming together to study, say, hey, we have a group. Right. Study. Can you imagine yes. that? Yes. Several churches yes. doing Bible studies together. Wow. That you know, that's a powerful concept, you know, which you, what you're saying is because it's biblical. Uh, and there is so much more that we can accomplish. Was Ecclesiastes say two are better than one because they have a good reward or re good return for their labor. And so when we recognize how important it is for unity, it's a very important doctrine. Christ talked about it. The apostles talked about it. It's in the Old Testament, it's a theme. But for some reason, we find in the times that we live that we have not yet 
really grasp it. I mean, there are some kingdom ministries that are doing that, but I think as an overall whole, you know, I think, you know, in, even though there are different communities of Christ, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, you know, and everyone has their specific visions, but we're still working for the same Lord, same master. We still have the same kingdom goals, and it's all for the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that should be the most important rather than our own personal agendas. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, we do recognize that that human element comes into play. Sure. And sure. we want to separate. We want to talk about how great. Well, I'm going to say <laughs> I used to hear it and I'm, I'm right. putting it out there because I already told you I'm not called the pastor. That is a grace that God gives to certain people. Ooh. But mm. I am like Moses. I did not birth, not near one of y'all. And oh. <laughs> It's a lot. Yes, we, right. it's the hospital. Yes, we say yeah. you come as you are. You know, I remember just uh -huh. as I am without one plea, right? Okay, I remember that. Yes, you come as you are, but you're supposed right. to grow. And sometimes right. that growing time period is a mm -hmm. little hard. Just like when we, mm -hmm. we birth children, those mm -hmm. terrible twos or them getting into yeah. everything and them messing up and we love mm -hmm. them. But it's hard disciplining some individuals mm -hmm. and especially the rebellious ones. But yeah, I have yeah. a heart for pastors because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of grace. But what mm -hmm. I've also seen is that there is, in many instances, this, I've got to prove that I am doing what God has called me to do. And I want to show that I am better or I am doing more or, and you know, mm -hmm. we'll go to how many members do you have? And then they give you this enormous oh, yeah. number and nobody's showing up. 10 people are yeah. showing up on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. It's not yeah. that. If you're doing yeah. what God has called you to do mm -hmm. for the people that he's called you to influence, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you do 10 if you do a thousand or if you do 10,000, if right. you do the purpose that he has planned for you, I think that's that you, right. you're major. What does he say? Yes. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Come on. Your that's reward right. is here. Yeah. yeah. You know, well mm -hmm. done. That's what we want to mm -hmm. hear. Well done. Yeah. And I Matthew think about, Matthew say 25, that again. Right? Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 25, where I think you mentioned that earlier mm -hmm. when he gave one, five, one, uh, two and one, one. Two, yes. One, one. Yeah. So and according to their own ability is what the scripture says. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As the Holy Spirit gives, he yeah. decides when you look at the, the, um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he decides what he's going to give you. Now, can you ask for more? Yeah, you can ask mm -hmm. for it. That's but right. he knows what you are capable of and Thank where God. he wants he to knows. place you. No imitators, mm -hmm. no competitors. Mm -hmm. We're all in one body here and That's we're right. trying to work together. And I yeah. love it where Paul talks about it. Like, the hand is not the foot and the eye is, you know, not the mouth. Or, even That's those commonly right. parts, he says, those uh -huh. that we don't think anything of, they are so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very so true. Important. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has a specific gift and an ability and uh, God knows the grace that he's given unto you to be able to do it. Someone has the grace for 5,000 members. Some people have the grace for 500 as pastors, I would say. Some maybe the grace for 50. And think about it. And if you try to go outside of the grace and the ability that which God has given to you, you may have some problems. I mean, you know, oh, might yeah. drive you crazy <laughs> as a pastor. <laughs> Hi, thanks for watching and listening but make sure that you subscribe, like, and share, and then throw a comment and let me know if there is anything that you would really like to hear information on. If it's the New Testament, if it's the Old Testament, if it's covenant relationship, if it's your authority in Christ, if it's ministry gifts and church government, or if it's financial healing after heartbreak, let me know. And we here at Heart to Heart Truth, we're going to make sure that we bring you the information that you need for a time such as this so that you can truly stand on the promises of God, walk out his principles, but ultimately have that real and personal relationship. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes, and it truly has been my pleasure. You can find
find us online at h the number two h truth dot o r g. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on His promises, walking out His principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.